Hello, hello. Hey, hey. This is starting. So my name is Luis Cañat Diaz. Oh, I miss my face here. A hey, much better now. So uh, my name is Luis. Uh, I work for Pitergia. Uh, by the way, Ruth, if you have, if you are there, well, this is this uh, this is uh, recorded. Ruth, if you are there, thank you for, so much for the invitation. So today I'm going to talk about the about the um, community health metrics that we can provide with Greenboard Lab. And well, first thing first, my name is Luis, uh, Luis Cañat Diaz. I'm a software engineer. I've been working with, with data, data sets, insights, and open source maybe for 15 years. And uh, I'm also a Kiosk contributor. I contribute mainly to uh, to uh, uh, Grimmar Lab, which is a sub project of Inside Chaos, and to the to the metrics models. I'm I'm also a, a Viteria co-founder. Viteria is a company we created some years ago, and um, I'm also a, a, a fan of churros. <laughs> churros is something uh, typical in Spain that we eat with chocolate. Uh, it is like fried dough. Uh, is it healthy? No, at all. But in case you you visit Spain, I recommend you to. To, to have some tourists with chocolate. So I'm going to talk today about community health metrics, but uh, I've been thinking about the what can be the, be the the best takeaway you can get from my talk. And uh, I would like to provide you some examples about uh, the best way to use metrics, because it is very common that um, um, we start cal calculating metrics without a clear uh, idea of, of, the, of what we need of, or why we need metrics. Why? Because um, uh, we have too many things to be calculated. We can get too many metrics and it is key to define uh, the goal we have. So um, let, let me replace this question. Why do, you, why do you need data with this one? What is your goal? And um, I want to use this, this, this question uh, to work in the metrics you want to calculate for yourself and for the metrics you want to calculate for the organization you are you are working for. And um, my proposal and my advice is to use this question uh, as the North Star when, when dealing with metrics. And this is why, um, as I said, there are too many metrics to be calculated. So if you start with the metrics, you are going to start with the uh, ones that are easy to be calculated and you are going to get lost. So the definition of the things to be calculated, uh, they must be defined in a in a in a uh, top-down fashion, starting with goals, and then with questions, and then with metrics. This is the the goal question metric approach we use in Chaos and we use at Pitergia. And uh, the, the in 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 short, uh, we define the goal uh, that what we want to achieve with the metrics. So we. For instance, we want to be able if the project is uh, healthy. So we, for this goal, we define a set of, of questions we need to answer. And then in order to answer these questions, we uh, define some metrics that will help us to answer the questions. So we need, we have, we now we have the list of metrics we need to calculate in order to uh, assess if a project is healthy. Okay. Uh, we will have metrics that cannot be calculated for sure, but at least we know it. So uh, this is basically the, the goal question metric approach. So I'm going to skip a couple of the slides because the, I have a, a short slot, uh, but I would like to provide some uh, some of the of the most basic example of goals, which is to adopt sustainable open source or um, to um, find out if a project is, is sustainable or not. So, uh, if you are working with 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 um, uh, 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 an organization, uh, I guess that you are aware um, about some reports. For instance, the the one uh, published by Synaptic last year that stated that ninety seven percent of the applications are using at least one open source library. So, for those for those organizations, I mean, for all organizations, it is relevant to know if the, if the dependencies they're using are sustainable or not. There are ways to measure this with the static code, code analysis and with uh, vulnerability analysis, but uh, we want to go further. We are not uh, in, in Greenmore Lab, we are not measuring, um, we are not measuring um, the complexity of the code. We're not measuring the number of vulnerabilities, but we are trying to predict 
with 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 the information we have the the future of the project so um let's 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 go back we this is the the goal for our example so we want to adopt sustainable open source so we want to find out if a project is sustainable if a project is healthy so some of the questions we may have i have a list here um do you do you expect uh, do you expect this project or projects to be maintained in the next two years uh are any of them maintained uh, by a single uh, maintainer so uh, this is this is very relevant are they maintained by a single company so depending on the on the library and how critical it is uh, if they are maintained by a single person this can be something very very important because your organization should be aware that uh, if that person uh, quits the project then uh, most of the activity most of the maintenance activity is gone so this this is very relevant so let's let's uh, use these questions to define the metrics we need okay and uh, after talking about the metrics we need let's play with the with the grimoire lab platform to see uh, how we can play with the data and get them so goal uh, adopt sustainable open source so we need to find out if the project is healthy first metric uh, the first metric i suggest is pony factor pony factor um, well, by the way, we have a Bitergia, we have a blog post where we introduce uh, some of these metrics. Uh, you can find it in uh, at blog.bitergia.com. Uh, so we have a post talking about the Pony Factor. The Pony Factor is a metric created by Daniel Gruno from the Apache Software Foundation in 2015. And uh, it was inspired by the boost factor uh, and the, the, the history. Uh, around the boost factor is is worth mentioning but uh, uh, i think i don't have time but uh well i do it very quickly uh in 1994 um in the python in the python mailing list someone sent this 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 message uh talking about guido guido is the python uh, is the python creator I'm, I'm talking about the programming language so uh in a meeting in a business meeting some people wanted to know uh, what will happen to the Python community without Guido in case Guido is, uh, uh, disappears. So, and the subject was, if Guido was hit by a bus, what is going to happen? So this is, the, this is how the, the, the bus factor uh, was formed for, for open source projects, for, for software projects, I mean. So, um, so basically, Daniel Gruno in the, in the Apache Software Foundation used this idea uh, to create the Pony Factor. And the idea of the Pony Factor is to know uh, how many people uh, is doing the majority of the code, of the co of the contributions to the code. So in other words, the, the people who are submitting 50% or more of the commits in the last years. So uh, after applying this metric to the Apache Software Foundation, uh, he found uh, very interesting results and he applied the same metric to other 20 projects and this is what what this is what he got for instance he got that uh, the git repository the git project was mainly uh, maintained was mainly contributed by, by one one person one developer wordpress had a pony factor of two which, which means that two two people were responsible of 50 or more of their uh, contributions in commits for nginx it was one and you can say, okay, I, I think this is kind of relevant, but uh, let's imagine that you are uh, in an organization and you are concerned about the security. So uh, this one, open SSL, this is 2015, uh, the, the pony factor was two. That means that uh, the majority of the contributions to the code base uh, depend uh, at that time in two people, okay? So this is something that uh, should be taken into account in order to, to select a library uh, for a critical environment, for instance. So um, I'll go a bit faster. Uh, at, at Bitergia, we got jealous about the pony factor. And uh, I think that uh, the same year or one year after the pony factor, we created the elephant factor, which is pretty similar to the pony factor. But instead of looking of, of uh, identifying contributors, we in the five organizations or companies. So we want to uh, find out the companies behind the, 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 
the majority of the contributions. So some, comp some projects uh, can be led by two or three companies, other can be led by a single company. In the second scenario, if that company goes away, then the project is, is, can be unmaintained. So this is something that uh, should be also taken into account. And uh, the third metric is active contributors. And this is relevant. And uh, uh, next time you see a report about the project or community, seeing like a number of commit developers, number, number of PR submitters for, X, for the project X, uh, ask uh, this to yourself. Um, are you talking about people submitting uh, PRs, people creating comments during the last year, last two years, last five years, during the whole activity, the whole life of the project? This is relevant because there are, there are there is a way, for instance, to measure only active contributors, okay, and active contributions. At Viteria, by default, we use the 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 definition of active, like uh, as someone. Uh, contributing to the project in the last six months. And the, the, the default uh, definition of contribution is something setting a PR or, or, or issue or submitting a, a back report, this is an issue, or creating a commit, okay? So uh, now let's go to the, to the dashboard and let me skip some of the slides. Well, uh, let me talk now about Grimoire Lab. We are going to have like two minutes to, to see it in, uh, to see it live. So Grimoire Lab is 100% open source. It is, it, is written, it is written mainly, sorry, in, in Python. And uh, we are using OpenSearch as the, as the uh, search engine and user interface for the data. We are using Django. Uh, to provide uh, a user interface to deal with the, with the profiles of the contributors and companies. So we, we have uh, different data sets and uh, the result is a, a dashboard that we, we are going to see now in OpenSearch. Um, it is, as I said, it is GPL version 3, it is open source and it will be open source. And uh, so uh, we are tracking uh, data sources platforms that we track that we call data sources like GitHub, GitLab, Gary Discourse, Stack Overflow, and many more. And, and in the slides I include here, there are some links to, to live examples. And I'm going to, uh, these two are run by, by <clears throat> community members. I'm going to use the one that we are using at Bitergia to, to, to provide some of the services we provide, uh, which is called Bitter.io. So let me now switch to the, to the browser. I can. Okay, so uh, let me double check that I'm recording this. Okay, yeah, I have two minutes. Um, well, this is this is the, the the view. This is the dashboard that we are using. This is Open Search. So we are customizing Open Search with with some with some plugins to 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 allow us to provide the, the data. And in Open Search, everything is clickable, which is quite cool. Here we have an overview of the Git contributions. And uh, we have a menu on top with, with several, with different uh, dashboards available and uh, many, diff many useful tools provided by the, by the, by the open search uh, product. I was thinking that this is not really open search. Open search. We are going to migrate this to open search in the next weeks. This is still, uh, I think it's the last free, uh, free open version of Kibana where we are switching to, to open search. Uh, very soon. So this is not the last, the latest uh, Grimoire Lab available, but the functionality is, is very similar. So for instance, um, we are here having a look at the contributions for the last five years. You can see here this, this filter for the last five years for the Chaos Project. And I'll show you how flexible this is. So instead of last five years, we're interested in the last six months. Okay. And uh, we know that Chaos is composed by many different uh, sub-projects. We have them here. And I'm interested now in Grimoire Lab. So I can filter by Grimoire Lab. We see that most of the activity in the last six months uh, in Grimoire Lab uh, is, uh, is Vitergia's activity. So we have like 500 commits, 
uh, nine authors and we have here the frequency of the commits and the different authors per month so um, things other cool things that can be done with this dashboard you can for instance start uh, filtering in authors or you can use the filters on top to exclude them okay um, I'm out of time so um, just visit the, the dashboard there are many different dashboards we have more than 30 I think uh, there are very cool things we can create net network graphs uh, every uh, very very different uh, kind of graphs uh, graphs and um, you are you are you are welcome to to join the community and to start creating your your dashboards and and sharing share share them with us so thank you so much uh, I'm sorry for being out of time um, I guess that my my uh, present version of myself uh, has been replying your questions in the in the chat so thank you so much bye